We'll now move on to our next topic, which concerns economic development. And that can mean anything from attracting large industries to retaining the workforce of the future to helping locally owned small businesses thrive. The candidates have had much to say on this topic, and so do Nidvia and Papo Ruiz, who own and operate the Rincon Criollo restaurant on Detroit Avenue in the Gordon Square Arts District and a new location on Denison Avenue. They have lost 70% of their business in the pandemic and hope for more support from a new administration. Uh, Envia Ruiz said responsiveness is key. Um, we need help with the mayor with permits. Um, we're trying now to obtain our uh, liquor license for here for the second location on Denison. Um, MedZone was the one who encouraged us um, to get the first license and the first liquor license for the one in Detroit, the location in Detroit. And we have, and it's been very good. We've had a lot of success with that. And now we're trying to obtain it from the second location. Trying to um, have, uh, find somebody on the phone or trying to go in the building and locating someone who could help, who could give us some access, some enlightenment on, on what to do, what not to do, how to go about it, uh, paperwork, uh, who to talk to, phone numbers. Uh, that has really been a really challenge for us and just getting there and, and have somebody help us. Elizabeth McIntyre of Cranes Cleveland Business has our first question on this topic. So what incentive opportunities do you envis envision for new businesses, but also to retain businesses already here? And will return on investment for the project, that is what other economic opportunities will be generated by the development project, be a factor and how so? Council President Kelly. Thank you. So if you if we take a step back and look at who was hurt the most during COVID, it's the people that were struggling the most before COVID. Now, small business owners, for some reason, there's a misnomer that they are somehow wealthier, they are somehow, uh, you know, that they have it good. Well, small business owners are dreamers. They are people that max out their own credit cards. They take loans from their family and friends. And there is just nothing that, that, that burns me more that they're, when they're waiting for a sign off on their electrical permit or something so that they can realize their dream. So moving forward, we need a mayor who understands their pain that will make sure that we are investing in those businesses that were hurt most by COVID. And again, it, you don't have to look far. The number of restaurants that, that went out of business, the number of restaurants that can't find workforce right now, we have to make sure that we that we shore up this, this, this base of the economy because vital neighborhoods depend on restaurants, small businesses, and street level retail. There's an opportunity to direct ARPA dollars to these, to these businesses, but we just have to value, we have to realize the value of these businesses. Thank you very okay. much. Mr. Bitt. It's my job as mayor to create the right conditions for good quality job creation all across the city. And right now in the city of Cleveland, we are operating in a 19th century world uh, in a 21st century economy. It's broken. As mayor, number one, I want to be able to fast track the permitting process so City Hall is moving at the speed of business. You should be able to have a digitized permit so you can track your permit over time. And it's a shame that during this pandemic, many small business owners applied for relief from this city, and it took months after months after months to get them the grants they needed to stay afloat. One month is too late in terms of keeping your business alive. So we need to do a better job of having a modern and responsive city hall that moves at the speed of business to ensure that we can create good quality jobs all across the city because small businesses are the backbone of our economy. And then thank you, and, uh, uh, Mr. Kelly, we'll give you 30 seconds to rebut. Yeah, thank you. When COVID hit and the People are waiting, small business are waiting for their PPP checks. The city of Cleveland stepped up with a, with a fund to bridge this gap. It didn't take months and months, but it, it took a minute. Now, the thing that we need to pay attention to, though, is it exposed something else, is that our small businesses need technical support and back office support because, you know, they didn't have three years of audited financial of payroll reports. So we need to make sure that we're, when, we, when we claw our way out of COVID, that we're giving our businesses the tools they need to succeed. And Thank City Hall much. will do that. Uh, Mr. Bibb, give you some time. Nope, you're all right. Well, thank you very much. Um, our next question goes to Lawrence Caswell. Thanks, Nick. You have both indicated that you are for allocating money in the city budget to support arts and culture, as well as establishing a cabinet-level position to support arts in the city. 
Tell me what support for arts and culture would look like under your administration, in particular support for individual artists as opposed to arts institutions. Mr. Bibb. Well, one thing I get excited about is having an artist in residence in my administration that can work with my cabinet and commissioners to really think about how do we do a better job of designing basic city services, leveraging the creative energy of our artists uh, across our city. The other thing we got to do a better job of in Cleveland is investing in great quality public spaces and our artists can truly play a large role in doing that all across our city. And then thirdly, you know, we need to do a better job uh, of investing in artists early on. You know, I was at a high school a couple weeks ago uh, at CMSD and many of our students have been locked out of great art programs in this city. We got to start young because the artist economy is a main, a major driver in making sure we can have a globally competitive city long term. Mr. Kelly. Thank you. First thing we need to do is look at and make sure that we continue the public arts requirement of all public projects that they do have a public arts component. That has been a, a that's been a tr tremendous success. But now we need to move to make sure that, in terms of this economy, to make sure that we are giving artists an opportunity to succeed. There's there is no need for any artist to move out of the city of Cleveland. I had signed a, a contract to make to bring public art to our to our council chambers, and a critical component of it was that the that it would have a rotating. Uh, you know, artist stream, and they would be paid for their work, and it would be something where we would encourage artists to come to, to City Hall and talk about their work and talk about what they've done. But it's a step towards making sure that this part of our economy is included in Cleveland's recovery, make sure it's a part of City Hall, and really just beautify City Hall and make it, make it the gallery that it should be. It's a beautiful piece of architecture. It's a beautiful interior, beautiful rotunda. We can take it to the next level, but everybody needs to be paid fairly. Thank you very much, Mr. Kelly. Uh, our next question concerns a major part of the economic picture, and that's education. We all know that the schools have been uniquely disrupted by the pandemic. Uh, for each of you, how can the Cleveland Metropolitan School District make up for pandemic learning loss and get students who have fallen behind back on track? Mr. Kelly, we'll begin with you. Uh, thank you very much. This, uh, this question means an awful lot to me. I am a CMSD dad. And I saw firsthand what happened when COVID hit and when students were sent home. I saw the fabulous job that our teachers did to do workarounds to make sure that they went from subject matter experts to technology experts and making sure that they were teaching kids how do we use these devices, how do you upload your assignments. But we really need to acknowledge that we lost a lot during COVID. And the first thing we need to do is really assess. We need to have an individual assessment of every student and really make that determination because I don't know if we know just yet what we've lost because we're, you know, there's still, um, we're still in this reopening phase. We need to make sure that we do that. We need to make sure that we are understanding what was lost during COVID and what we need to move forward because we cannot afford in this community to have lost a year of education. It is just too important. I see it with my, in my, with my daughter's class and, and with her peers. There is some loss and we have to bring, we have to get to where we were and then exceed where we were. Thank you, Mr. Bibb. You know, the achievement gap was a major issue before the pandemic. And in many cases, the pandemic um, accelerated that achievement gap and learning loss in our city. Now, have we made great strides in CMSD? Absolutely. Uh, I believe the Cleveland plan was a good step in the right direction. I'm excited to engage in the redesign of that plan if elected mayor. But as we think about the future of public education, it's important to tie this to the future of work. Um, to help our children in this moment, number one, we need to better invest in our teachers so they have the supports they need to keep our kids engaged in the classroom. We need more supports around high dosage mentoring for our students that have suffered a lot of learning loss during this pandemic. And I also believe we need to do a better job in this city of investing in high quality after school programs for our children. When I was growing up, when those street lights came on, I was either in the Boys and Girls Club or in the library doing something. Every neighborhood deserves high quality out of school time programming. That's how we meet the whole needs of our children. Uh, Mr. Kelly, did you have a rebuttal you wanted to offer? No, I just really, as we, as we move forward, we have to really look at the education of the future. We have to stop thinking that we can not be talking about say yes and not talking about the portfolio of opportunities as motivation for the kids for the parents to understand that if they 
treat their academic you know, life seriously, if you if the parents work with the teachers and we as a community move forward, there's a whole portfolio of opportunity waiting for our scholars. We just have to do a better job of educating them on that, promoting CS to education and promoting all the jobs. Thank that you very much. Uh, Mr. Bibb, your time if you'd like it. Yeah, I would just say um, one of the things I've been recognizing as I've been canvassing and crisscrossing this whole city is that many of our parents don't feel like they have a voice in terms of what's happening in public education. Uh, we should be exploring having a robust parent, parent advisory board to advise our Board of Education and the CEO of CMSD and my administration, if elected mayor. Uh, I also want to have a youth council in my administration where youth are at the center of how we improve not only public education, but how do we make Cleveland a great city that works for our children? Because if this city works for our children, it can work for everybody. Thank long you term. very much, Mr. Bibb.